Hello once again, crafters. Um, after my last video and the fact that I've mentioned the millipede stitch a couple of times, I've been asked to do a tutorial on how to do that. There is another one available on YouTube, but the guy talks really, really slow, and apparently he uh, is rather annoying. So this is what it's going to look like when it's done. This one I actually have to redo because I made it the wrong size, so I'm actually going to show you the process kind of backwards. I'm going to show you how to take it apart first. So if this were on your wrist, you would pull out the pin. What I generally do is I put the pin right back in because it gives you kind of a leverage point. And you're going to grab your weave right here and give it a tug. And what that does is that kind of slides your weave down a bit, scrunches it all up. And then right on the inside you find your two that you started with and pull those through. They should slide right up the middle might take a little arm power. Sometimes you have to do it one at a time too, I have found. What you're left with is a, a weave that wants to come apart and the end that's going to help it do that. So when you pull this loop off to actually remove your D-shackle, you're still going to have these two ends that are hanging out. Now when this is finished, these two ends will be tucked up inside. So if you're showing somebody how to do this at a show, you want them to be aware that you've got two loose ends that are stuck up inside and they're going to have to pull those out before this, process, this particular step is going to be possible. Otherwise it's going to get tangled up. When you go to the other end of the bracelet, you've got these two nice little loops. You pull both of those, get them worked out. And then as you pull this through, what's going to happen is your bracelet is actually just going to fall apart. So there you go, in about, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds on slow-mo you can have one of these things apart. Alright, so let me get this set up real quick. Um, if you watched my previous videos, you know how to singe and you know how to set up for a de-shackle. So I'm just going to set this up real quick. I'm not going to do a huge explanation on it. Um, unfortunately, I shoot these on my cell phone and it has no pause button, so you're going to have to deal with me doing this real fast. Once you are all set up, regardless of which end you choose to start on or whether you choose to do a six core, two core, or four core, or whatever you want to put in there, you're going to start it pretty much the same way. All right. So as you saw in my previous video, I kind of use my finger as an anchor and kind of as a spacer to make sure that my loops are consistent. And you're going to do this, um, it's basically just a knot followed by a knot followed by a knot. Um, I choose to go under first because when you're using your finger as a spacer, it just seems to be easier to do it that way. So I'm going to start on the right, and I'm going to go under, and then through the little loop that I just made. Okay, tighten this down. Be careful not to let your core slide if you're doing a floating stitch like this. Get it where you want it. Get that first stitch relatively tight, okay? So that's your right side. On your left side, you're going to mirror that process. So you're going to go under, through the loop. And that's your basic stitch. Now here's the important thing to remember is that you're actually going to alternate over, under, over, under. Um, I don't know if I can get a good close-up of this, but ooh, where is it? All right, so if you look at this, you can kind of see my knot is on top and my cords come out of the bottom. If your cords are coming out of the bottom, you want to wrap it the opposite way. So you want them to go over and then through the loop. If your cords are coming out of the top, then you want to go under and through the loop. Um, I'll show you how that works. Let me just uh, put my camera back. So right now, I'm looking at it under. They're kind of pointing down towards my jig. So you're going to go back to your right side, over, through the loop, and tighten that down. Same thing on your black side. Your black side is pointing down, so you want to go over, through the loop. 
when you tighten these down, they look a little gappy. Um, what I choose to do is you grab both of the sides and kind of pull them in, slide up a little bit, and then tighten it down. You're going to end up with a much nicer finished process, uh, much nicer finished product um, than if you just left it the way that it was. Um, if you're the type of person who's just really good at sliding it up and tightening it down in the appropriate place, then you probably won't have to do that. But for those of us who might be a little more delicate with our cord, sliding it and tightening it is just fine. So right now these are pointed up. Let me get my jig here. There we go. So right now these are pointed up, so we want to go under. So under and through. Under and through. Tighten them down, and now it's starting to look like a pretty misty pattern. Um, now we're pointed down, so we're going to go over and through, over and through. Takes a little to get used to, to doing it this way. Um, I kind of prefer this pattern over the Solomon bar, simply because for the purposes of using your paracord, unless you're replacing a shoelace or, you know, a purse strap or something minor like that, if you really need access quickly um, to your paracord, this is going to give you the quickest access to it. Um, so basically you just, uh, you, you continue that pattern. If you have to walk away from it at any point and you come back and you're like, oh man, which way was I supposed to go? Just remember that you're always going to go opposite. So if, you, if your cord looks like it's looping up and down, then you're on the top and you need to go under. However, if your cord goes straight down to whatever surface you're working on, whether it be a jig or a string or your desk, whatever, then you're ready to go over. And you always just alternate. I'm sure you could do this with more than two colors. You can totally do it with just one color. Um, I like the effect of the two colors, which is why I do them this way. Um, I think that's about it. Um, you would finish this off and then view my other video for finishing a bracelet, because I'm not going to do it on this one. <laughs> Thanks, guys.